All right, so for today's video lesson, uh, we're going to go over a chapter four uh, radicals, key concepts, and review, okay? Uh, tomorrow, well, today you guys will have time to work on uh, chapter four review, and tomorrow you will work on uh, the chapter four take home test, okay? Uh, you will bring that in to school when we return to in person classes on the Tuesday, okay? So, um, first thing that we talked about in this unit was uh, changing mixed radicals to entire radicals. So, for root three, so this is a mixed radical, right? We have a whole number and then a root number. Um, so, for root three, if we went backwards and we put the four back into the radical, this is equal to three times four times four, right? Remember when we were going from simplifying it from a radical to a mixed number, we would look for pairs, right? Uh, and this is kind of the same thing, but we're just going backwards, right? So if we have four root three, it is the same thing as saying three times four times four, which is equal to root 48, okay? So that's going from a mixed radical to an entire radical. Okay, so make sure we're able to do that. And remember, anytime that you see a number out front, that means that we took two of them out uh, underneath the radical. Okay, uh, we also worked on changing entire radicals to mixed radicals. So kind of the opposite of what we just talked about. So we did uh, prime factorization. So breaking those down into prime numbers. So um, so in this case here, um, we didn't really do product of perfect squares, so you can just kind of forget about that one, but we did really focus on prime factorization. Uh, so this one here, so the cube root of 144, so again, we need to um, recognize that this is a cube root, so if we're simplifying this, we need to find uh, triplets instead of pairs, right? Okay, so let's break down 144, how do we get that number? Well, we can do 2 and 72. To get to 72, we do 2 and 36. Uh, to get to 36, we do 2 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 3, okay? So the cube root of 144 becomes still the cube root of 1, 2, 3, 4 twos and 2 threes. Okay, we are looking for cubes, right? So we need to look for triplets. I see three twos, so I'll take that out front. The remaining are only two threes and one two, right? We are looking for triplets. So let's take those two out. Because this is a cube root, it'll be two times the cube root of two times three is six, times three is 18. Okay, so the cube root of 144, is equal to 2 multiplied by the cube root of 18. Okay, uh, we also worked on simplifying radicals. So remember, uh, we always want our radicand to be in the lowest possible terms, right? So for this one here, so for root 52, let's see what our products of uh, 52 are. So we have 2 and 26. We have 2 and 13, and 13 is a prime number. Uh, we can only get that by 1 times 13, so we'll stop there. Okay, so 4 root 52 is equal to, um, let's leave the 4 alone for the meantime. So 4 multiplied by 2 by 2 by 13. So let's write a 2, not a 3. This is the square root, right? If you don't see anything there, uh, we assume that is a square root, so we are looking for pairs. So we'll bring those outside. So 4 times 2 is 8. Square root of 13. Okay, 52 is not a prime number, so it's not fully simplified. Um, so we break it down into its components. So 2 times 2 times 13. And then we'll bring out uh, any pairs that we see, okay? 
All right, uh, we also talked about adding and subtracting radicals. So remember that these must have common radicals, okay? This is when we're adding and subtracting. For the same reason that if we have like 3x plus 1x equals 4x, right? We need to have the same degree of variable. Okay, so same thing here, except for we're replacing our radical, or sorry, our variable with our radical. Okay, so to simplify or to add and subtract these radicals, we need to have a common radicand. So let's start simplifying uh, 32 here. So we got 2 times 16 times 2 times 8 times 2 times 4 times 2 times 2. Okay, we can also do this for 400 as well. Let me go over here. So we have 2 and 200, 2 and 100, 2 and 50. 2 and 25, and to get to 5 and 5, or to 25, it is 5 times 5. Okay, so let's rewrite this um, in our uh, prime factorization. So root 32 becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos. Plus 5 root 2 minus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, twos, and two fives. Okay, we are taking the square root here, so let's look for pairs. So there's one, there's one, and over here we have one, two, three. These are all um, in pairs, so that's going to be nice for us. Okay, so let's take out these twos. So I'm going to take out one, two, and then I'm going to take the, out the other two, so I, two times two is 4 root 2 plus 5 root 2 minus, uh, I'm taking out a 2, I'm taking out another 2, and then I'm taking out a 5, so 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20. Okay, now that we have the same radicand, we have root 2 in both, we can add these, so 4, plus, or four root 2 plus 5 root 2 is equal to 9 root 2 minus 20. All right, so make sure we have the same radicand when we are adding and subtracting. Okay, uh, working our way down, so we are in multiplying radicals now. So remember, uh, we're going to multiply the front number by the front number and the radicands by the radicands, right? So our front numbers are 8 and 9, so 8 times 9 is equal to 72. And root a times root a is equal to root a squared. And if you take the square root of a squared, you'll be left with 72a. Okay, so the most important part with uh, multiplying radicals is that we multiply the numbers out in front, and then we multiply the radicands by the radicands. If you have... Um, say 8 root a plus 3 times 2 root a, okay? Uh, don't forget to distribute, so make sure that 2a is multiplied by the 3 and also by the 8 root a. All right, so into dividing radicals, so we have two types of radicals and we need to recognize each type. So we have those that divide evenly and those that do not. For those radicals that do not divide evenly, uh, we must rationalize the denominator uh, to try to help us um, simplify it or to allow us to see if it does divide evenly, okay? Uh, remember, we do not like leaving our final answers with a root in the bottom, so that's what rationalizing it is essentially uh, removing the root from the bottom. Okay, so let's uh, start at the top. So 10 root 24 divided by uh, 20 root 2. 
So this is the same thing as writing 10 divided by 20 multiplied by root 24 divided by root 2, which is the same thing as, say, as writing 10 over 20 multiplied by the square root of 24 divided by 2, right? Uh, 2 will divide evenly into 24. So we do that, we will get 1 over 2 times root 12. Okay, we need to simplify this. So how do we get 12? We do 2 times 6 times 2 times 3. Okay, so this will become 1 over 2. Root 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. We are taking the square root here, so we're looking for pairs. So bring those outside. Uh, 1 half multiplied by 2 is 1. So we will just get root 3 there. Okay, so that was uh, if they do indeed divide evenly. If they do not divide evenly, we must rationalize the denominator. And what that means is that we will multiply our radical by the, like our whole term by the radical in the bottom. So we're going to multiply that by root 7 divided by root 7. Okay, remember when you are multiplying radicals, you're multiplying the numbers out front and the numbers underneath the roots. Okay, so uh, 4 times 1 is 4, and 7 times 5 is root 35. And then root 7 times root 7 is root 49. Uh, 49 is a perfect square, so we can simplify that. So this will become 4 root 35 divided by 7. Okay, so that is rationalizing the denominator. Uh, domain and range. Okay, so domain and range, this is the values uh, of which the graphs will exist. So remember, domain is associated with x. And range is associated with y. Okay, so for domain, uh, we are going to set the radicand equal to zero. So whatever is underneath the radicand. So let's say, for example, we have y is equal to uh, the square root of x cubed minus eight. Remember, the radicand is anything underneath the square root sign, right? So we need to set x cubed minus 8 equal to 0. So add 8 to both sides. Take the cube root of both sides. Uh, the cube root of 8 is 2, right? 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So we have x equals 2 here. And instead of setting it equal to zero, you're going to want to set it greater than or equal to zero, okay? And then we will find that our domain, uh, our x values only exist when x is greater than or equal to two. Okay? Great. So, and again, um, so that's for domain. Uh, for range, uh, you're just going to use your calculator and look at the table and see where the y values do exist or where there is not uh, error for the y values. All right. Um, restrictions. So for restrictions, um, one, we need to set the radicand greater than or equal to zero, and solve for x. Remember, we cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? So whatever is, whatever our radicand is, it must be greater than or equal to zero. Um, also for restrictions, uh, check the degree. of your variable. If it is even, equals no restrictions. 
if it is odd, then x must be greater than or equal to zero, okay? Um, also for the restrictions, if we have um, like a rational function, if we are dividing, so if we had maybe 10 root x minus three divided by 10 root x plus two, uh, we would need to check the restrictions for the numerator so that a radical or a radicand is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, but we also need to check the restrictions on the denominator to make sure that we do not get a uh, value of zero because if you divide by zero, it is undefined, right? So if it's a division problem, you need to check the restrictions for the numerator and the denominator. And your restrictions for the entire function is where they both agree. restrictions. Now for solving equations, uh, you guys did this yesterday, so you should be um, pretty, pretty good with that. Um, but yeah, so when we're solving, we need to get x by itself. Um, yeah, so I want to solve for x, either algebraically or graphically. Um, if if we're doing it graphically, let's say we have our function is 2x is equal to the square or the square root of x cubed minus 8. Okay, then is what we would do, uh, you could set this to be your y1 and set this to be your y2 and find where those lines intersect. Okay, or you could solve this algebraically, right? Um, yeah, you could solve this algebraically as well, okay? So, um, if you were, this is a difficult function to solve algebraically. So let's, let's do this one um, graphically. So uh, y is equal to 2x, so that's going to look something like that. That's my y1. And my y2, the root of x cubed minus 8, looks something like this. Okay, so in that case, uh, you would find that intersection point, which you can find on your calculator, right? If we do the uh, second calc function, uh, second trace number 5 intersect, uh, you will get an x value there in this particular question. Uh, the intersection point is 4.4 .4 and 8.8. .8. Okay, so our x would be 4.4 .4 here. All right. So that is uh, chapter four review. Uh, now your assignment for the rest of today's class is to uh, work on these practice problems. Um, for those questions that have four options, um, just choose two options each, okay? Um, and this is not going to be marked, um, but because you guys have a uh, chapter four take-home quiz for Thursday's class, um, I will assess there. Um, but you guys need to uh, take this time to review uh, this content, okay? So again, as always, if you need help, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. 
And if you're just motor along, motoring along, keep on cruising. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. See you soon.